Uh, I think this is the fourth time in a couple of years you've hosted me, and each time I've talked about two broad themes. The first is our position uh, in rail freight across Australia. So we have great asset scale. We have 700 locomotives. We have 13,000 wagons. And so that makes us the largest rail freight operator. But what's unique is that we also own and operate 5,000 kilometres of track. No other rail freight operator does that. And so that gives us a really unique position across the country. The second theme I've always touched on when I've been here is the fact that as a business, we have really good inflation and interest rate protection. In a higher inflation and interest rate environment, Horizon should do well. What's nice today is I can actually point to some numbers that prove that, and that is what I'm going to show you now, which is some key themes from our half-year results. So I'll start in the top left. You can see our EBITDA up 26%. What was encouraging about that is our three main business units all contributed. So across coal, network and bulk, EBITDA was up. That's what drove the group EBITDA up 26%. What's encouraging is that we saw really strong free cash flow. So good free cash flow conversion and that's helped provide us with additional balance sheet flexibility. And what we do with that flexibility is something I want to come back to a bit later. We also declared an interim dividend of 9.7 cents per share. Uh, that was based on a dividend payout ratio of 75%. Now, as I said before, good free cash flow, that's deleveraged the balance sheet. It's given us more flexibility. And so what was new in our result last week that we flagged is shown on this slide down the bottom. And that's that we will have more flexibility for increased shareholder returns in FY25. <laughs> Throughout the last week, people have been saying, what do you mean by that? What we mean by that is that you are likely to see an increase in the dividend payout ratio and or capital management in the form of on-market buybacks. Those are both things that we've done in the past and given the financial position of the company and how we project it going forward, we expect to have good balance sheet flexibility to enable that in FY25. When I've been here in the past, I've talked about progress against our strategic aims. And so I wanted to put up our half year results almost by business unit that demonstrate that progress. <clears throat> so on the left is our coal and network business EBITDA. So remember I said at the start that we have businesses that should perform well in a higher inflation and interest rate environment. Well, our coal and network businesses are just that. We have CPI resets in our revenue contracts in our coal business. And in our network business, it's a regulated almost utility. And so what happened on the 1st of July 2023 is we had a reset of the regulated asset base and the weighted average cost of capital. Now, I'd been promising that because we could see it coming for a year, but it actually happened on the 1st of July 23. And so that's what drove strong earnings growth, in particular in the network business. But if you combine the uplift in EBITDA across network and coal, both of them combined up 30% on the prior corresponding period in terms of EBITDA, and that's that orange bar in the left-hand chart. The chart in the middle is our bulk business, and you can see if you go back five or six years ago, it was a pretty small contributor to the overall group. We've made investments in that business, and you can see that EBITDA for that group was up $12 million or 12% against the prior corresponding period. Now, that's despite grain softness on the east coast there wasn't a lot of grain for us to move and we had a couple of customers with production issues but we're pleased with it being 12 percent up and we think it'll be stronger again in terms of an uplift in the second half the other thing we've shown on this chart is containerized freight so with the acquisition of one rail we move the containers between adelaide and darwin that stocks shelves in supermarkets and also department stores and hardwares in uh, Darwin. But the other thing we announced about 12 months ago is that we signed an 11 year agreement with TGE. That's the old toll group. They're Australia's largest freight forwarder and we're ramping up under that contract. And you can see the effect of that in the chart on the right. So in the half, we moved 75,000 TEUs or containers. If you double that, you get to 150,000 containers. Now to put that in context, that's 15% of the containers on rail in Australia, but it's less than 4% of the total containers moved around Australia on road and rail. And so the reason I labour that point is that's where we see a big opportunity for us. 
Not only can we grow market share from 15% in the rail segment, but we can shift freight from road onto rail and we're already seeing some signs that we're having success there with customers like TGE. So we're expecting to move a lot more boxes on rail as you project forward over the next two, three and four years. So those orange figures are, if you like, our scoreboard as at the half. But as I tell my kids, you don't give out trophies at half time. Uh, it's only at full time. And so what was important at our result is to reiterate our guidance. So we're a company that gives quantitative guidance. We give guidance for EBITDA for the full year, uh, which we've reaffirmed at 1.59 billion to 1.68 billion. We also reaffirmed our guidance for sustaining and growth capex for the year. None of those have changed. And the reason we give EBITDA and we give capex is because they're good proxies for free cash flow. And the reason I wanted to finish on free cash flow is the point I made earlier, which it's the strong free cash flow of Horizon, which is enabling us to have balance sheet flexibility and then to have more flexibility for shareholder returns in FY25. Thank you.